Hi to everybody. I am Ananda Pereira from Safai Kingdom Gemology. Today we are discussing lesson number five. It includes uh, artificial and heat treated stones uh, inclusions. So inclusions that are not visible to the naked eye inside artificial, that means man-made or lab created and heat treated stones. Heat treated stones are allowed in the business, but artificial or lab created or man-made is the wrong thing. It is not allowed inside the gem industry. So remember the difference between these two. Okay, we are moving to lesson number five. Next part, synthetic sapphire. That means lab created or artificial or man-made inclusions we are discussing from here. Then after that, we are discussing the next one, heat treated. The contents are very helpful in identifying the stone. Identifying the stone is an aid to trade. Remember this last line. Now this is in synthetic sapphire. Uh, the method this synthetic sapphire created is name is Chatham Flux Growth. Chatham Flux Growth is the method name. I explained the names also here. This is the uh, platinum crystal. Platinum crystal, there is a nice shape. So morphology is there. So platinum crystal inclusions occur as a cut morphology in a synthetic stone obtained by a Chatham flux growth production. This is 1.72 millimeter section enlarged, the stones enlarged section. Here another one. It is parallel, you can see parallel, likely parallel layers the name for this layer is Sandmir lines. Plato Sandmir lines. Call this. This is the Plato Sandmir lines. Then you can see the lines make with the shadows. Own shadows are they visible. Then cross polarized under the cross polarized light, it shows like this. Cross liquefied or cross polarized light means both are same. That, that is the lighting condition. It is a pink sapphire, synthetic pink sapphire. The product production method is flame fusion. The method is flame fusion. 8.68 millimeter section is enlarged. Now here is another synthetic. Chohaski method. We use Chohaski method to this. So it is Chohaski grown artificial stone. That means man-made stone, lab created stone. All are air bubbles. It is finely arranged like thin tips. We can see the parallel layers. So many layers are there. Thin tips, layers with thin tips. You can see it is the it is the symbol we have to identify. Johaski grown artificial stone. Three millimeter section is increased enlarged. The illumination method. Lighting condition here is low to medium dark field illumination. There is a method called dark field illumination. You can learn later. I will explain it later. It is low to medium dark field illumination. That means Rainberg illuminations. Both are same. It is synthetic. This is very famous one. Synthetic sapphire, the method is flame fusion. When we use flame fusion method, it can show the curved color bands, curved lines, all are curved, not straight lines, parallel straight lines. You can remember in lesson number two, you uh, understand chatoyancy and the star effect. Then we learn that straight lines, parallel straight lines. In natural st uh, natural stone, the lines, lines are parallel. But in synthetics, it is curved. So that is the main difference we have to remember. This curved banding tells us it is synthetic. Right? It is 4.11 millimeter section enlarged. Then, this one. 
it is another method. Hydrothermal method is another method we are using to produce inside the labs. Hydrothermal method. We discuss so many things. This stone is three millimeter section enlarged. It is artificial stone produced by hydrothermal method, which shows an overgrown structure. You can see the overgrown structure here under microscopic observation. When we see this, we can see it is hydrothermal method, synthetic sapphire. Now we are moving to heat treated method, heat treating method, heat treated natural sapphire. The contents are very helpful to identify the stone. Identifying the stone is an aid to treat. First one, heat treated method. First one is wrong thing. You better understand beryllium diffusion. It is completely wrong thing. But using heat treating method. So, stone is covered with the beryllium mixture and heat up to 1900, 2000 degrees. Then the stone is little bit melting. After melting, the beryllium ions are diffusing inside the stone through the skin of the stone. But it is diffusing only two to three millimeter, maximum is three millimeter from the surface. So the inside of the stone is colorless. But this beryllium ions, when it spreads, it gives blue color or uh, related color in the sapphire. If it is blue sapphire, white stone can improve the color with the beryllium diffusion. But we can identify it with this kind of smoke rings. These are the inclusions we can see in beryllium diffusion then we can recognize it very well. But no machines are here. Machines are very high, highly expensive. The reports are very highly expensive to do this. So better to understand very well the methods. So beryllium diffusion we can recognize, identify like this. Smoky rings. 1.26 millimeter section is enlarged here. Next one is another thing, cobalt dubbed lead glass filling. It is glass filling. White sapphire, take white, they are taking white sapphires, natural white sapphires and give the cobalt dubbed lead glass to get the color. So the colorless sapphire make blue color. This microscopic image shows cobalt glass and air bubbles. These are the cobalt glass. Blue color is co cobalt glass is spreads. These are the air bubbles. Can you see air bubbles? See? Cobalt glass and air bubbles. So cobalt dubbed lead glass filling is this with heat, high heat. Not low heat, high heat. That means 1900 between 1009 2000. 7.84 millimeter section of the stone is enlarged. Now this is the heat treated another sapphire it is actually heat treated heat treatment this heat treatment is allowed in the industry the white colored mineral inside the here inside this inclusion white colored mineral is there mineral crystal and the panel shape stress crack show that it is a heat treated sapphire stone with this crack, we can understand it is heat treated. See this? 2.12 millimeter section of the stone is enlarged. Now this is another heat treated cut and polished, cut and polished sapphire. See the passage here? When we see this, we can, we can see the surface of the facets are melted melted so this may this is this shows us high temperature have done this that is the reason so this damage caused by the high temperature so it is heat treated sapphire a false color image obtained using differential interference 
contrast microscopy shows that the surface of the stone has been heat treated as it shows melted damage as, as it shows melted damage here on the facets 1.23 millimeter section is magnified now this is the famous allowed heat treating method when we heat a sapphire up to 1900 between 1009 to 2000 degrees celsius it becomes little bit melting the solid uh, stone is become little melted melted states then inside the stone there are titanium and ions titanium and iron ions are mixing together then it produced blue color. So this is the concept we are using in heat treating. But we have to control the temperature at the real point. If we fail to come, fail to do it, it will loss. So temperature controlling is the main thing in this heat treating method. When rutile is thermally treated, you know the rutiles, parallel lines, Rutile fiber, that rutile fiber is thermally treated. A crystal lattice is formed and the titanium in the rutile combines with the iron in the sapphire. Ions are inside the sapphire, titanium oxide inside the rutile fiber. Both are mixing and diffuses the blue color internally inside the stone. So the color is improving. But the uh, heated sign is there. See, look at here. Highly heated signs are there. So, these signs are very important. 3 millimeter section of the stone is enlarged. Now, the concept here in heating, weak fiber layers included stones are not cut as stars. Lesson 2, we discuss with stars. But subjecting the silk to heat treatment, that silk fiber layer, when we heat it, titanium of that uh, weaker layer mixed with the iron inside the stone, then it spreads the color. The weaker rutile fibers melt and the titanium and iron couple and diffuse inward, increasing the blue color of the stone. So remember, this is the theory. We are using when heating, when do heat treatments. It is allowed inside the gem industry. It is not a wrong thing. The price of the treated stone is 75% of the price of natural stone. That means if the natural stone is $100, the heated stone is $75. That is the only difference. It is allowed in the gem industry. They are called treated sapphires. Here, stones that have been removed from damage and defects are heated to a temperature close to 2000 degrees Celsius. So we can produce good, uh, good stones. It is very important to remember the 10 types of inclusions here. Do it anyway, not a difficult task. If you do, you win. Only these 10 and 20 natural stones from the previous lesson should be remembered. You have to re restudy and remember this very important. Lab test must be done to distinguish between artificial and natural stones. It is compulsory. For this, do the trade after obtaining a lab certificate from a gemologist. If you follow my this uh, course well and study well, you don't need to go there. You can find with the loop. The stone is natural or synthetic or heated. That is my objective. Precious stones are paid for after lab certification. Remember this. Join us and learn and enrich your future. We will meet in the next part. That is lesson six. Okay. Bye.